Look! Every day from deep underground, the bowels of the earth are releasing water vapor and CO2 gas. Yep, both of those gases are greenhouse gases, but we don't worry too much about water because... It goes up from the bowels of Earth, forms a cloud as condensation, then falls down as precipitation. Yes, it does. Water doesn't accumulate in our atmosphere. But Earth is also releasing CO2 from deep underground. That CO2 and the water vapor are coming from... Volcanoes! All those fiery lava bombs, plumes of ash, melted magma flowing out onto Earth's surface as lava... It's an astonishing and dangerous phenomenon. But what's gas got to do with it? Well, volcanoes are kind of like soda cans. Straight off the shelf, a soda has lots of carbon dioxide dissolved in the liquid. Pressure from the can keeps the gas compressed in that small space. Give it more energy by shaking it, and some of that gas will be energetic enough to leave the liquid. Pressure in the can rises. Release the pressure by pulling the tab and kapow! That gas expands fast, taking up a lot more space. Now that's powerful gas. Let's watch it happen. No bubbles in this soda until I release the pressure by opening it. All those bubbles are carbon dioxide gas escaping from the liquid. I'm going to put 60 milliliters of water in this 100 milliliter syringe and cap it with clay. Then I'll put 60 milliliters of soda in the other syringe. Add some energy. Look! The syringe with the soda shows 30 new milliliters of CO2 that escaped from the liquid soda. If we could capture all the CO2 that was dissolved and compressed in that 60 milliliters of soda, we'd get about 150 milliliters of CO2. That's a lot of gas. And it's relevant to volcanoes because magma also has powerful gases dissolved in it. Instead of giving it energy from shaking, heat provides the energy for gases to escape from rock. If only we could ask our burning questions about volcanoes in a powerful gas escape room. <laughs> hey, Cog, you're all fired up to go in, but first you'll have to sign the release form. Ooh. We're not responsible for ash, asphyxia, lava, lufa, rash, fireball, brain fog, Krakatoa, Vulcan mind melt, or pyrocastic flow elbow. If you experience discomfort, push the panic button. Hey, look! You completed the first task by signing. The tectonic plate's gates opened. In here, you'll use a cheesy substance to represent the semi-solid rock mantle of Earth. Crackers represent the rigid tectonic plates that are made up of Earth's crust and upper mantle. You'll build models of places volcanoes form. An oceanic ridge is formed as divergent plates pull apart and lava fills the gap. A volcano might form here. Let's watch that close up. A hot spot is where unusually hot magma pierces a thin plate. Thin, runny lava oozes out. Let's watch up close, Kano. Subducting plates happen where two plates collide. The thin, dense oceanic plate is pushed under as they move together. Let's get closer. Hey, you completed the tasks. What's next? Oh, now you're in the melting mantle magma zone. In this zone, gases are released from minerals in the underlying crust. Water is the most abundant gas released. CO2 comes in second. The gases rise and get dissolved in the mantle, making it less dense and lowering its melting point. Melted magma blobs rise. Magma's viscosity, how easily it flows, will determine the type of volcano formed. Your task is to answer this question. Is it easier for gases to escape from thin, low-viscosity magma or thick, viscous magma? Looks like the thin magma makes gas bubbles easily. It'll ooze out as lava and build shield volcanoes. But gas in thick magma is released in messy burps that make explosive volcanoes. You're right, Cog. The thin magma does release its gases more easily. Now you can move up into... The magma chamber! Gases separate from magma and rise, looking for a pathway to escape. It's kind of like being inside a shaken soda can. You better put on protective clothing, a panic button, and a breathing device. Pow! Great gobs of fire! Look at that lava! Wow, Cog, 
You are on fire, and you've earned a treat. How about some molten lava cake? Hmm, maybe it's too soon. But we did learn that gases lower the mantle's melting point. Then those less dense magma blobs rise. Gas pressure increases and kapow! But is that CO2 spewed out by volcanoes causing climate change? Well, ash and particles from volcanoes can cause weather changes. Mount Tambora erupted in 1815. In 1816, Thomas Jefferson wrote about the unusual drought and cold frosts in Virginia. He didn't know that was the work of Mount Tambora, but we do. But what about climate change? Well, let's put CO2 emissions from volcanoes into perspective. In 2022, we released 37.5 gigatons of anthropogenic CO2. That's CO2 released by human activities. Volcanoes, on the other hand, release somewhere between 0.13 and 0.44 gigatons of CO2. Let's pick a number inside that range and say volcanoes released about 0.375 gigatons of CO2. Set up the ratio and you can see we produced 100 times more CO2 than volcanoes. Looking closer, we see 38% of the CO2 we emit comes from power plants, 22% comes from transportation, 21% from industrial combustion, 9% from buildings, and here's a surprise source. Cement production emits a bunch of CO2, and I mention it because volcanoes and cement production both release CO2 from rock. About 67% of cement is calcium oxide, which we get from limestone, calcium carbonate. Take a chunk of limestone and heat it up. You get that calcium oxide you need, plus an almost equal amount of carbon dioxide. 100 pounds, or 45 kilograms of limestone, makes enough CO2 to fill 45 big beach balls. In 2021, cement production emitted 1.7 gigatons of CO2. Using that same high estimate of 0.375 gigatons of CO2 from volcanoes, you can see that's about four and a half times more CO2 from cement than from volcanoes. Don't forget, cement production emits CO2 from burning fossil fuels used to reach those high temperatures, too. So let's recap. Compressed carbon dioxide, or CO2, can be dissolved in liquids like soda or magma. CO2 is released from volcanoes when they erupt. Each year, we emit 100 times more anthropogenic CO2 than the CO2 emitted from volcanoes. Cement production alone releases about four and a half times more CO2 than volcanoes. Well, believe it or not, that's our last video about the sources of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. But that's just the beginning of the story. Now we're going to talk about what carbon dioxide in the atmosphere goes into. Let's talk about carbon sinks. <laughs>